Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I don't say this lightly. The internet, the ability to make money making videos like this one, thanks to Google monetizing videos, has literally changed the game and what's happened to the sport of boxing is really far ahead of the curve right the journalism in boxing has never been better more importantly it's light years at this point beyond any other major sport because of people like Dante from Dante's Boxing Nation Hustle Boss Ellie setback. These journalists are actually going around and they're talking to the source, the fighters involved in the fights, the boxing managers, the boxing promoters, the boxing trainers, and they're getting information <clears throat> that's unfiltered. You don't have this in baseball. You don't have this in basketball. You don't have this in the NFL on this level. Right? Team sports a little bit different. Guys are employees of teams. They're a little bit hesitant to criticize teammates, to violate team culture. In boxing, it's just different. Right? Quincy Jones likes to say that music is a generation ahead of the rest of the world, right? I'm telling you the journalism here online in boxing is a generation ahead of the rest of the world. Decentralized beats centralized. Uncensored beats censored, right? You're getting a lot of real truth here online. I hope you look at people like Hustle Boss, Dante, Ellie Setback, uh, FightHype.com, and others, right? Now, let me say this. There are a couple of interviews. In fact, there's three interviews online that struck me with regard to Manny Pacquiao. <clears throat> we'll call it 36 rounds, right? Somebody tracked down Brandon Rios, who went 12 rounds with Manny Pacquiao, 12 now, Brandon Rios, to his credit, is a straight shooter. He actually, in the interview, openly talks about how Manny Pacquiao was so fast that he saw three of Manny Pacquiao. Right? He couldn't keep up. Manny Pacquiao was that fast. Right? He would look one way, suddenly here was Manny Pacquiao over here. He'd look another way, suddenly here was Manny Pacquiao over here. Pacquiao was just too fast for him. Rios, who's trained by one of the best trainers in the sport of boxing, Robert Garcia, talks about how he wasn't ready for Pacquiao's speed. There's an interview here online of Robert Garcia <clears throat> where he's asked, point blank, You've prepared fighters to fight Floyd Mayweather. You've prepared fighters to fight Manny Pacquiao. Who's it harder to prepare for? Now, Garcia, who thinks Mayweather wins a battle between Mayweather and Pacquiao, is actually here on record, on film, saying that it's harder to prepare a fighter to fight Manny Pacquiao. Right, because the speed and the footwork is so fast that you can't duplicate that in the gym. You can't convey to your fighter exactly how shocking it's going to be. And then, of course, there's the power element. Right, Manny's not just fast, Manny hits hard. Right? There's another video, and it's fascinating. 
It's before Manny's fight against Chris Algieri. Somebody tracked down Timothy Bradley. Right? And you can look up these videos by just typing in, you know, Timothy Bradley, Algieri, you know, and up will come interviews of, you know, Timothy Bradley talking about Chris Algieri. And Bradley was responding to an interview Algieri gave where Algieri said that, you know, he thought he was faster than Timothy Bradley. This was before the Algieri Pacquiao fight. Algieri was saying he should have more success against Manny because he thought he was faster than Timothy Bradley. Now Bradley's a gentleman. <clears throat> he chooses his words carefully. You can tell. Bradley was surprised that Chris Algieri thought that he was faster than Bradley. Right? But then Bradley goes further. Now keep in mind Bradley's 24 rounds. Right? Let's add him to the 12 Brandon Rios faced against Manny Pacquiao. Bradley's 24 rounds against Manny Pacquiao. And Bradley, who calls Pacquiao the best fighter in the world, right, then goes on to say that Algeria's going to be surprised when he gets in the ring because Pacquiao's footwork, his foot speed, coupled with his hand speed, is something that's surprising. It's just hard to prepare for. Now I say this <clears throat> because I believe that Manny Pacquiao, if he's that dominant in terms of foot speed, hand speed, and power, and let me add, there's another video here online you need to Google. It's Shane Mosley. Right? That's another 12 rounds against Manny Pacquiao. Right, so that brings us to 48 rounds against Manny Pacquiao. Brandon Rios, 12, 24 for Timothy Bradley, 12 more for Shane Mosley. Where Shane Mosley in the interview <clears throat> says that he has never been hit harder in his career than he was hit by Manny Pacquiao. Right? Now, here's the problem. Right, and let me be clear here, right? These are guys who have been in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. We're talking about how surprising his speed is. How surprising his power is. How overwhelming the whole thing is. My question to you is simple. If it's that overwhelming, how come all three of these guys, in fights in which they're surprised during a Manny Pacquiao fight, right, the foot speed, the hand speed, the punching power, how come all of these guys were able to go 12 rounds, right? Understand that if you're that overwhelmed, in other words, if Brandon Rios walks in the ring and some guy is so fast, he's seeing three of him. Let me say this. If the guy were Julio Cesar Chavez, senior, and you're in the ring and you're seeing three of him, if the guy were Sugar Ray Robinson, you're in the ring and you're seeing three of him. He's much faster than you expected. You don't even know where he is in the ring. Let me just say that there is simply no way that you're going the distance unless there are holes in the game of the guy you're seeing three of. In other words, if I'm in the ring against prime <clears throat> Roy Jones Jr. and the first round starts and it's like a scene out of the Matrix, right? I'm looking and he's here, he's there, he's there. I'm like, what the, what the? Then he hits me and it's harder than I've ever been hit before in my career, 
right? And the guy has the dazzling footwork, the dazzling speed, you know, the angles and all this other stuff. There's no way I'd be going six rounds with Roy Jones Jr., much less 12 rounds, right? Let me offer from the bleachers, right? I haven't been in the ring with Manny Pacquiao, right? I'm a hack here online. I'm not a fighter. Right, but let me offer another perspective. Right? You know how when you're watching baseball, the pitcher who changes speeds sometimes is able to blow the fastball by the batter. That a fastball pitcher who can't change speeds can't do. In other words, the bullpen is flooded, isn't it, in baseball? with guys who throw 100 miles an hour. It's flooded. But you understand that that gimmick only works for those guys for a couple innings. That's why they're relief pitchers. That's why they're not starters. Right? The starters who have big fastballs have other pitches. So you're in the batter's box, and it's just not change-up fastball. No, you're there, curve, you know, slider, sinker, you know, then, oh, here's the heat. You understand what I'm saying. Now, the problem with Manny Pacquiao is that it's one speed all the time. Right? You come in, it's like a scene out of the Matrix. But guess what? It's always like a scene out of the Matrix. Brandon Rios is able to go the distance with Manny Pacquiao. Right? Because there's no second act in Manny Pacquiao's game. Right? Understand, Timothy Bradley enters the ring with Manny Pacquiao. I'll concede Bradley calls him the best in boxing. Right? Timothy Bradley, shocked by Manny Pacquiao's quick feet, Manny Pacquiao's quick hands, then starts shooting a jab. On two sprained ankles, he goes 12 rounds with, Tim with Manny Pacquiao and then wins the decision. Now, I know many people here on YouTube disagree with that decision. Right? But the point is, how are you in the ring with Superman and you're able to go the distance? Right? Here's why. Right? Pacquiao is boxing's equivalent, really, of a relief pitcher, isn't he? He's fast. He's overwhelming. When a relief pitcher first comes in a game, runners could be in scoring position. That relief pitcher is going to be blowing away batters, right? They've been looking at a guy throwing a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. Suddenly, here's a relief pitcher coming in, 100 miles an hour. Fastball might be rising, right? Chapman, Cincinnati Reds, for example, right? He's going to blow away batters on the front end, right? His whole game is geared to go one to two innings, right? But after you figure out the gimmick, Right? Guys will start getting to relief pitchers. That's why in baseball, you actually have different kind of relief pitchers, don't you? You got a group called middle relief. Because these are the guys who could keep it together for three or four innings. Then you have a closer. Right? Now, Shane Mosley had never been hit as hard as he was hit by Manny Pacquiao. Now, let's remember when Shane Mosley goes down in that fight. It's early, folks. It's like the third round. Right? It's early. Now, if Manny Pacquiao is that fast and is hitting you in a way that you've never been hit before in your life, why is it that Shane Mosley was then able to go another nine rounds with Manny Pacquiao? Now, let's talk about a different Mosley fight against a fighter I think is more complicated than Manny Pacquiao. Mosley's in the ring against 
Anthony Mundine, right? They start trading punches. Mosley finds himself in trouble. How does that fight end? Mosley quits on his stool. Fight doesn't go 12 rounds. You know why Mosley quits on his stool. First time in Mosley's career that he pulls the plug on a fight. You know why he quits on his stool. It's because Mundine's two-handed. It's because when you're in trouble against Mundine, good luck finding an escape route. Right? Mosley understood in the middle of the fight, later than the third round, that he was in such trouble against Mundane that there wasn't a chance for him to make it through the rest of the fight. Against Manny Pacquiao, he does. So the point I'm making is this. As you look at the videos, just understand that even guys who are overwhelmed in the first round, guys who show up in the first round and say, my God, this dude's feet are fast. Oh, my God, this guy's hands are fast. Where is this guy? There are three of this guy. They're able to go the distance. Why? Manny Pacquiao is one speed all the time. Why? Manny Pacquiao isn't two-handed. He has a right up close. If he's up on you, he can throw a right hand. But if he's a little bit away from you, you know his punch is going to be a straight left. Understand, it's a straight left. It's not like it's a left, a straight left and a left hook. No, it's a straight left. Right? In other words, He's the guy who you can figure out the release point on after a few rounds. He's the guy who you say, wow, he, he has a 100 mile an hour fastball. But it's always in the same position, isn't it? If I could figure out the release point on the fastball, I can start to hit it. Because there's not going to be a curve, a slider, a circle change mixed into it. Right? Let me just say, because Pacquiao is always fast, for a technician like Marquez or Mayweather, his speed is going to become a non-factor once they acclimate to his style. So, Marquez, first time in the batter's box against Manny Pacquiao. Strike one, strike two, strike three, right? He is knocked down three times, right? Joe Cortez allows the fight to continue. Then what happens? It slows down for him, right? Pacquiao's not mundane in terms of unpredictability, right? You know, mundane is attacking you sometimes. Other times mundane's away. Sometimes mundane's fast-handed. Other times mundane's slow-handed, right? Mundane's clutching you sometimes. Sometimes he's not clutching you. So you're in the ring. Maybe mundane's not dazzling you with the foot speed and the hand speed of a Manny Pacquiao. But he's a much more complex puzzle. Understand if Pacquiao wasn't such a simple fighter, style wise, then guys who hop in the ring who are as dazzled by the foot speed and the hand speed as Brandon Rios and Timothy Bradley were. And guys who are as dazzled by the punching power as Shane Mosley was wouldn't be able to go 12 rounds with him. So, Floyd Mayweather, defensive master. He's going to be in the ring. Keep in mind, this is 2015.
Floyd is going to have access to all kinds of digital files on Manny Pacquiao, right? Digital videos of Manny Pacquiao. He's going to know Pacquiao is a straight right up top. Excuse me, straight left up top. Straight left up top. So understand what that does. Pacquiao is going to be moving fast, but that cuts down the angles. Right? So Floyd's going to know. Pacquiao's over here. Floyd can ignore Pacquiao's right hand. He can ignore Pacquiao's bouncing and the implicit threat of throwing something other than a straight left hand. He can ignore the risk of Manny Pacquiao coming in and hitting him in the body. In other words, there's not even the intrigue of a Miguel Cotto where Cotto comes in and I don't know if that big left is coming up top or is coming in my ribcage. With Manny Pacquiao, you know it's a straight left up top. Even an opponent who's confused can say, you know what, let me put a hand up by my chin. Right? Let me duck my head a little bit and put a hand up here. That might be able to stop Manny Pacquiao. Go back and look at the Chris Algieri film. Pacquiao knocks down Algieri several times. How many of the knockdowns are straight left hands? We're here online. You have access to the film. Give it a look. How many of the knockdowns are straight left hands? How come a technician like Chris Algieri, right after the fight, after being dazzled by Pacquiao's speed, after being knocked down several times in the fight, how come after the fight he himself says that Floyd Mayweather beats Manny Pacquiao? Why is it that Marquez knocked down three times the first fight against Pacquiao, knocked down another time in the second fight, knocked down four times by Manny Pacquiao? How come Marquez believes that Floyd Mayweather beats him? Let me tell you. Now, I predicted Pacquiao would beat Algieri. You know, if those two guys ever fight again, I would expect the fight to be very different. Because now Algieri knows the angles. And the problem is Pacquiao is not going to change gears. He's not going to change speeds. So Algieri knows the angles and he knows the speeds. The big question, it's the big question for the Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao fight is simply. How long does it take Floyd to adjust to Manny Pacquiao's hand speed? Right? If Floyd adjusts to Manny Pacquiao's hand speed in the first round, the fight is over. Because Pacquiao doesn't have a second and third act, a plan B and a plan C. Right? If Floyd's blocking Pacquiao straight left, the fight's over. If it takes Floyd a few rounds, because keep in mind, Floyd was in against Zab Judah. As many people here online like to remind me every time I mention Zab Judah's name, Zab Judah knocked down Floyd Mayweather. Zab Judah was winning that fight. It took Floyd a few rounds in that fight to figure out Zab Judah. Just understand that Zab Judah believes Floyd Mayweather beats Manny Pacquiao. There's an interview of Zab Judah here online, a recent interview of Zab Judah, where he makes that prediction. Right? Zab Judah, like Manny, Southpaw. I would argue, in some ways, Prime Zab Judah was more complicated than Manny Pacquiao. I know that's not a popular view. Just look at the two guys. Right? If Floyd figures out Manny's speed early, it's Floyd in a cakewalk. If Floyd doesn't, and if Manny Pacquiao lands early, like he did against Marquez, then it's a jump ball fight. 
right? The issue is simply how long does it take Floyd to crack Manny's code? And I'm here to tell you folks, the code's not that complicated. It's dazzling speed and great straight left hands from distance, right? Let's just say, as I've said before, if a guy hops in the ring with Sugar Ray Robinson or Sugar Ray Leonard, right? And please, look up both of their KO percentages. And if a guy sees three of them, if Brandon Rios were to hop in the ring with either of them, and in the first round see three of them, right? Be that overwhelmed by the hand speed, there's no way. Even a heroic guy like Brandon Rios makes it to the second half of the fight. There's no way. Why? Because you understand with Ray Leonard and Ray Robinson, it's a two-handed attack. So if they're so fast that I don't know where they are, there are three of them. I can't even pick the one who's actually throwing punches. And they start unloading on me. There's no way I can block the punches. Against Manny Pacquiao, Brandon Rios saw three Manny Pacquiao's and went 12 rounds. I encourage you to look at Rios's condition after going 12 rounds. Folks, it wasn't like he barely made it to the finish line. That 12th round isn't Brandon Rios holding on. Brandon Rios getting off the canvas, right? He doesn't look like Bernard Hopkins in the 12th round against Sergei Kovalev. Right? He's not getting rocked and you're thinking, oh my God. You know, ref, show some compassion. No, he makes it to the finish line easily. As does Timothy Bradley twice. As does Shane Mosley. If you're that overwhelmed by Pacquiao's speed and power, how are you able to finish the fight? Just think about the great fighters you know. Right? The great fighters in history. Right? If I'm in the ring with Joe Calzaghe and I see three Joe Calzaghe's, right, and he, he, his feet are faster than I thought, his hands are faster than I thought, and I see three of them, I have no chance of surviving. None. Because there's too much hand speed. Too much hand speed. Right? Why isn't that the case with Manny Pacquiao? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here in the comment section to this video. Aren't fighters compliments of Manny Pacquiao also an indictment on the fact that Pacquiao can only operate in one gear? It's fourth gear. He can only operate in one gear. And his offensive arsenal is limited enough so a fighter can be completely overwhelmed in the ring and still go round after round after round. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.